A glowing sun effect appears on the right-hand side of the screen. This is a still image of Belinda Collins. Throughout this video will be alternating video of Mo Carpenter, your interviewer, and Belinda Collins, the interviewee. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Monday Member Spotlight. I have with me again a wonderful guest, and I'll let her introduce herself. Hello, everyone. This is Belinda Collins in Lumberton, North Carolina. I am a member of NextGen. I am a supporting member. I am about 5'1", and I have long, dark brown hair and blue eyes. Belinda, what is your eye condition? I was diagnosed with glaucoma at a very early age, which is pretty rare because most people with glaucoma, it doesn't develop until they're in their later years of life, but I was one of the uh, unfortunate ones to get that diagnosis when I was uh, maybe five years old. How would you describe what you can see? I have light perception. I always tell people that I have just enough vision to get in trouble and not enough to get out. So, <laughs> so basically it's one of those things where I can see objects, shapes, colors, but I have to be very close to the object in order to see it, even like a couple inches away. I don't have enough vision to rely on reading any sort of text, so I primarily use a screen reader. When did you find ACB? I've known about ACB for many years, but I really never got involved with any sort of blindness organization. Uh, just kind of follow things here and there over the years. But then last year, of course, during COVID, um, I discovered uh, the community events that started and uh, really didn't pay attention to them very much in the beginning because I was uh, in school at the time online. And so then there was a summer convention and I heard a few things from the convention from uh, listening to ACB radio during the convention so uh, it seemed pretty interesting and afterwards I decided to give the community events a shot and I have been here ever since. What made you join ACB Next Generation? I've always been a supporter of uh, younger people and just the ideas of younger people like the younger generation, they have a really good grasp on technology and things of today and obviously going to be the future of ACB. I just want to support the group because I think, um, you know, it's, it's a group that's going to influence uh, ACB in the future and there are a lot of bright and talented people within the uh, group itself. What is the best part about being a Next Gen member? Honestly, at this point, I am just enjoying a lot of the opportunity, the opportunities, and a lot of the programming that Next Gen has put together. I've actually been to uh, some of the Saturday night. Yep. There have been some once a month events. I remember. A few months back, there was one that was a collaboration between NextGen and the Multicultural Affairs Committee. That was really great. And just, just so many other um, programs that NextGen is putting together. It really tells me that this group definitely, um, there's a lot of promise for the future of ACB because of this group. What are your goals within ACB and or? ACB Next Generation. As far as Next Generation, I actually do want to become more involved at some point. Currently, I have not been able to uh, due to just my current schedule and responsibilities that I have on my plate at the moment, but I would love to get more involved at some point. And as far as ACB as a whole, I think uh, for me, I'm already starting to explore other opportunities and my goal is to eventually I want to become a member of one of the committees and 
just have a leadership role at some point down the road um, in whatever capacity that may be just to stay involved within the organization and help out as much as possible. The 2021 convention theme is better together wherever we are. What does this mean to you? Especially now during the whole COVID that we've all been through over the last year and a half, it really, I feel like it's, it's a, it's more of an opportunity to become uh, a unity, if that makes sense. Uh, basically, no matter where we are within this country, uh, even remotely, we can, we still have some of the same ideas, beliefs, and we can still get together thanks to technology and share our ideas and beliefs and um, support each other within the organization. Do you have a job? I am the MAC instructor at World Services for the Blind in Little Rock, Arkansas. I work remotely with clients. Currently I have two clients and uh, it's just a real blessing to be able to serve and watch others as they succeed. Do you do any kind of volunteer work? Currently I am the community assistant for uh, the ACB community events and I basically my role is to assist Cindy Hollis and Colby Garrison in whatever capacity they need me to as far as the events and scheduling and other things that need to be done. And I also am a member of North Carolina Council of the Blind. I'm a member at large and I'm on the convention committee there as well. So, uh, and hoping to uh, eventually serve in other capacities pretty soon there. What is your home life like? I'm married uh, to my husband, Wayne. We've been together for nearly six years now and we don't have kids, we don't have pets. Well, let me back up. My husband has, he has birds. He has lots of birds and uh, those are his pets. <laughs> but we don't have any cats, dogs, anything like that. And we live in a rural area in North Carolina and we live on property that is, we are surrounded by my family. What are your biggest goals or dreams? Since I am an assistive technology instructor, my biggest goals in life are basically to continue helping others who are blind and visually impaired to become more independent uh, using their technology and or their assistive technology and um, just continuing to watch others grow and succeed. What are you looking forward to in the next year? So the biggest thing for me in the next year, I am looking forward to going to Omaha, Nebraska to finally be able to meet some of the wonderful people I've met over, online over the last year within ACB. I, I just can't wait. I have met some just amazing people and it's going to be really exciting to just finally meet in person. Where would you like to be in five years? I definitely would like to still be involved within ACB in some capacity and being with within a committee uh, and also outside of ACB. I want to continue expanding my assistive technology um, just as far as instructing others and hopefully at some point I would love to get my own business off the ground and just kind of make a name for myself and be able to be my own boss and have clients and just not have to go through all the red tape of <laughs> just uh, you know working for others so that's that's kind of my goal. What makes you smile? When I am with friends and just listening to people talking and they're laughing, just hearing others laugh and they're happy, that, that's what makes me happy. What gives you confidence? 
just knowing that I have had a hand in helping someone to do something that they initially thought they could not do and just watching and listening to their expression their excitement as they discover oh wow you know I really can do this even though I'm blind um, it's just a good feeling to be a part of that and it makes me feel like you know okay I can continue doing this I, it gives me a lot of confidence what are your passions two biggest passions for me one is definitely teaching assistive technology two I am definitely a uh, big fan of advocating for the blind and visually impaired advocacy is very important to me it has been for years and uh, it's just something that I feel very strongly about. Are there any other hobbies or anything else you'd like to share about? I am a huge sports fan. I know a lot of women, you know, well, there are a lot of women now who like sports, but for a long time growing up, you know, I was the girl that liked sports when all of my friends were playing with Barbie dolls and stuff, and I was like, no, I want to listen to a basketball or football game. <laughs> so uh, sports is definitely one of my passions. I I love listening to it. That's what uh, drew me and my husband together. So I really get involved with that, and especially if my favorite teams are playing, people know not to call me because I get wound up and very passionate about it. How did you meet your husband? We met actually through a mutual friend. Our mutual friend and my husband had been friends for 30 years, and uh, she kept telling me that she wanted to introduce me to someone, and I was skeptical, uh, but you know, we finally met. We got to talk on the phone a few times, and before we knew it, we were talking every day. And eventually, he came to visit a couple times. And the third time he came to visit, he stayed and never went home. <laughs> so, <laughs> is there something you would like to try? And are there any barriers keeping you from doing so? I've always wanted to write my autobiography. I'd, I would love to do that. When I was a teenager, I started that and I'm not sure exactly why I stopped and just put it down, but I would eventually just love to do that at some point. Uh, right now, it's just, I feel like my barrier would be that <laughs> there are so many other things going on that I can't devote the time to it. So, but maybe someday I would love to do that. Where have you traveled to? I have not really traveled much. I've been outside of, let's see, I've been out of the southern states, but only <laughs> only a couple places, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, places like that. And of course, I've been all over the south. Where would you like to travel to? Definitely Australia. I have friends there um, and I would also love to go to Hawaii at some point. I hear it's a beautiful place and I'm afraid if I go there, I may never want to come home. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about one of your craziest adventures as a blind person. I was in my early 20s and a friend and I decided we want, my friend was a huge fan of the Backstreet Boys back then. And yeah, uh, she wanted to go to a concert. Well, this concert was only three hours away, but it literally took us 14 hours to get there because we, <laughs> we decided to um, travel by a Greyhound and we ended up taking the wrong bus that uh, went through, I think, they stopped at every Greyhound station within oh. two states, and we did not get there till 14 hours later, and we missed the concert. So, not a pleasant experience. We were so oh. upset. <laughs> yeah, it was not good. How do you think that impacted your life? It taught me that I need to learn, either learn to, you know, get over my fear of flying or find somebody with a car and say, let's go. <laughs> Do you have any hidden quirky talent? 
or funny stories you would like to share? So when I'm in a good mood, I, my husband can attest to this. I sometimes will just belt out random songs at the top of my lungs just when we're home together and I'm just just happy and I'm just singing songs and thank you know thanking God that no one else is around to hear. How do you prefer to spend time with friends? Grabbing a morning cup of coffee? Getting together over dinner? Or hanging out all night? Or something else completely? What's a toss-up between dinner and hanging out late at night because I know some friends are they are early birds they want to go to bed early so we do dinner but for me I prefer uh, hanging out late at night because I always say the later it gets the more interesting the stories get <laughs> is there any book podcast movie TV shows or anything else you would like to recommend so I'm a big pod podcast junkie I love all sorts of uh, true crime podcasts there's one that i listen to a lot called the dark side of oh gosh they talk about all sorts of random weird things that happen i'm also a big fan of obviously technology podcasts especially assistive technology um certain ones like blind bargains or blind abilities apple viz the typical ones like that I do like to read. I am a huge John Grisham fan, um, Nora Roberts. I love any any books by her. Uh, let's see, movies, TV. I'm a uh, reality TV show junkie also, especially the singing competitions, American Idol, um, and The Voice. I also, one of my biggest addictions in the summer, I love watching Big Brother. Uh, I've watched it every season since it started in the early 2000s. So yeah, those are some of my uh, addictions. What song would you stop everything you were doing to go crank up the volume and sing along to? That one's easy. I always have to sing Don't Stop Believing by Journey. Every time it comes on. <laughs> Who would you love to meet in fact, fiction, or fantasy? I have always wanted to meet Dolly Parton. Oh my goodness. That lady is, her personality is infectious. She's uh, just happy all the time and joyful. And you know, every time I hear her on TV or, you know, wherever, radio, she's, her voice, it, she just makes you want to smile. So yeah, I'd love to meet her. Is there a date or event that changed your life? I'm going to talk about uh, joining ACB when I decided to join ACB and more so when I um, started my internship with the membership services team at ACB. Uh, because before that I was pretty quiet, pretty shy, and some would say that I still am, but, uh, since doing my internship, I have been encouraged to be more open, be a little more talkative and just, uh, reach out and communicate with people. And so honestly, just the whole experience of that and just becoming a member of ACB last summer that has significantly changed my life if there were no barriers what would you be doing with your life right now i mentioned earlier that i live in a rural area and i've for the last several years i wanted to move to a larger city where there's actual public transportation that i could utilize to be more independent and unfortunately at this point i you know, financially, we can't do that. So that would be, that would definitely be at the top of my list to move to an area where it's, you know, there, things are a lot more accessible. What do you think people don't know about you? 
I am Native American. I am from the Lumbee tribe. It's a tribe here in Southeast North Carolina. And um, it's, I, I typically compare it to <laughs> ACB community in a sense because the Lumbee tribe in my area is a community in itself. Uh, and, you know, close knit group of people. Um, there's lots of opportunities and uh, things to take advantage of within the community. We have activities and events that occur during the summer, uh, not necessarily always for the tribe itself, but you know, for anyone to join, they have parades and they have uh, festivals, things like that. But it's definitely something that is put on by the Lumbee community. So a lot of people that don't know me, they don't realize that I am a Native American. What do you wish you really understood or wish others understood about you? I think sometimes I feel there's a perception that people mistake my quietness for, you know, not really wanting to be social. Um, I am shy by nature initially, but once I get to know an individual and I'm comfortable with them, then I definitely talk a lot more according to my husband. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I definitely, I want people to know that I am definitely a social person. I, I'm just quiet initially because I, I want to, I always say it's better to listen before we talk. So I do a lot of listening in the beginning. So that's just one thing I, I wish people understood more. What is the strangest question someone has ever asked you? My husband, who is also blind, and uh, uh, we're about the same height, I guess. He's maybe a couple inches taller. So we were at a dentist's office once, and this lady asked me, are you twins? My husband's <laughs> wife, my husband's response was, I do not sleep with my sister. <laughs> what is some random crazy fact you know? A random fact that I once heard was uh, Dr. Seuss Green Eggs and Ham was actually, uh, it got started based on a bet from his editor. His editor said that he could not produce uh, a short story in 50 words or less, and he did. Where did you pick up that fact? <laughs> Google. What is something you would like to invent or have invented for you? I am terrible at folding laundry once I've done it. Like, I know how to fold it. I'm just terrible at doing it immediately after it's done. So I'd love to invent or have someone invent an automatic laundry folder, if that <laughs> makes sense. Like you just toss everything in there and all of a sudden it's magically folded. What is something you would like to tell your younger self? Patience is definitely a skill that definitely... <laughs> has to be developed um, and also that uh, to remember to live in the present instead of worrying about the future so much. Is there a quote or other piece of advice you would like to share with all of us? Be careful not to let others um, who have not walked in your shoes criticize you until they carry your load or your luggage, as I like to call it, then they have no, um, inf they should have no influence on what, what you do. That's, that's my advice. I don't know where it comes from. Don't take criticism from someone you wouldn't take advice from. And I just thought that that fit in there really well, so. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's good. <laughs> Is there anywhere we could go to learn more about you? 
I can be found in the ACB community. I am definitely in next gen. Um, I'm also part of BITS. And um, I'm also on social media. People can find me on Facebook and on Twitter. Not so much, not so much on Instagram or uh, what's the new thing now? I'm um, showing my age. Uh, TikTok, not on there. <laughs> but definitely Instagram or Facebook. Or not Instagram, sorry, Twitter or Facebook. Thanks so much, Belinda, for joining us today. This is Mo Carpenter, and you have just joined us for our Monday Member Spotlight with ACB Next Generation. If you like these videos, we'd appreciate it if you could hook the like button and subscribe. If you would like to learn more about ACB Next Generation, you can find us on several social media platforms as ACB Next Gen. You can also find out more about us on our website, acbnextgeneration.org. We hope you join us next time as we feature more of our great ACB Next Generation members. Now on the screen is the ACB Next Generation logo with the words Develop, Lead, Elevate underneath. A glowing star effect appears in the center of the screen.